uh, welcome back to Twin Humanities Boys doing the Over Humanities stuff. Uh, plus, it's our Game of the Year thing uh, and stuff of the year and films of the year and books of the year. It's the of the year show, the first of the part of the of, of the year show. And if this uh, sounds like it's going to be uh, a little more muted than last time when when we did the the roof tube and we've had crunch bags and all that kind of stuff, um, this one is going to be just the satellite sort of awards um and is probably going to be a, a, a little little more low key than the next one but we've got we've got stuff planned for the next one uh yeah. and it's it's taking a, a wee bit of planning yeah uh, expect pop- expect our mm. top list not now mm. we do the the little stuff today yeah so uh I'm yeah, excited this is, though this is I'm our excited. of the year award show so uh, I'm Holly Bennett this is that Sid bloke and uh... <laughs> hello, I'm 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 the, I'm the puppet. What? I was puppet. doing a PlayStation reference then, and you. And so was I. They've got a puppet. But that's not that's not the. Someone doesn't watch many access those. They've got a fucking Delson that's Rodan. Not, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about doing? the I'm talking about the shows like the the ones like in Los Angeles and that Sid gentleman. Oh played. no! I'm talking about the ones in the office with a, a sofa and a puppet. There's, joke. there's nobody called Sid there, is there? No, there's nobody called Sid there because he's there's from the nobody, American team. Yeah, of course he is. And I mentioned the word Sid. I don't know if I can trust any of your opinions, but you can We're trust my listeners. Start, aren't you we? can this trust is... my listeners. <laughs> 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 yeah, uh, <laughs> it'll come to like we'll give a, an award, and I'll be like, uh, maybe skip three minutes, listeners. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, but so do you have a magical bag or a box um, for these, or are we just gonna well, like just throw a dart at the wall and see what happens? This is the thing. I was thinking like really super last minute because we've not really spoken to each other much in the last couple of months because working at uh, a retail as we do and our, our shifts being all over the place, we it's mm. difficult to it's difficult to combine them, but also things just get mental before Christmas anyway. Exactly. Um, so at right the last minute, I was like. I'm not just going to select them as I go along, am I? And um, my friend Kai went to Japan recently and she bought me back uh, this amazing uh, Cayman Rider figure, uh, mm. which uh, Cayman Rider build figure uh, from the Rider Kicks line. And okay. uh, I've got the figure sort of posing as he is on the box, but I've got the box behind him. So, of course, it went Whoa. into there. Did, uh, that was that was more enthusiasm than it deserved. Thank you. <laughs> Whoa! Oh my god! Oh my god! You bought the Carmen Rider box. Yeah, Rider Kick. <laughs> would Would you say we are choosing our guy of the year from that box? What, you wow! You do pay attention. I was listening. There was a, there was an episode where I went. Oh, that was a nah. <laughs> I, I I remember the word guy. Yeah, it's 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 a great show, guys. It's a really great show. I need to get back to it. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So um, this is going to be the satellite stuff, and then we're doing a top seven in the next episode. Uh, so keep your ears ready for that one. Excellent. Um, I look forward to to that one. Uh, but for now, is it uh, Gaim Box? Are we going to call it Gaim Box? No, because it's Cayman Rider Build Box. Oh, I thought you said it. Oh. We we'll work on God, that. Th- I remember that one time you listened. Those I was so proud. I was legitimately so proud of myself there for a those, second. Those are, the, those are the salad days. Or the fruit I days. I did it! Considering it, it came and ride a guy. Um, <laughs> who, who knew that a, that a show where powers were based around fruit would end up being uh, a monologue on uh, the corporations ruling our lives and the uh, tree of your grassle? <laughs> Not I, but then again, Not... it is the uh, screenwriter behind uh, Psycho Pass. Uh, so, rawr. I got in a Cayman Rider reference early. Thanks. Thanks for I... diverting me from the one Cayman Rider reference I had into another one. Thanks. I'm, I'm happy to help. Yeah, always. You've got to right. get a couple in. <laughs> mm. So, you are Patrick Stardust. Hello. I am Coffee Jesus. All right. Let's do this. Let's, let's do it. Let's let's hope you've got the MP3 of music from last year. Oh shit! <laughs> Otherwise, okay. we improvise. Yeah. <laughs> Jazz hands. Um, let's pick out the first category. You've written some stuff down. I forced you to write things down. 
I did. I typed it out with my hand words last night. Right. This this the two ways that we're doing this this show. Um, I did the former of it. Patrick Chick did the other one, and then we both got the opposite thing to do for the next show, which is mm. a bit wonk. That I explained that really well. That was science. Bit wonk. Mm. Uh, I'll shake the box. You can say when. This is okay. When? I'm going in. Delve. That was good. Thanks. That's that's some ASMR shit there. Ooh. This is this is this is the one I don't know if you prepared for. So best thing. Oh Christ. Could be anything. This is yeah. This is the one that you remember from last year that we hadn't done. Uh, I'd, I'd I'd worked from a list from about two years ago that was okay. uh, that was still on my netbook, and when I looked through the categories I'd given to you, I was like, oh yeah, there's this one as well, and I did that about <laughs> twenty minutes before we recorded. Are we using uh, we're using old old uh, old categories. Like, Favorite Spice Girls song. Well, this year <laughs> we've never. Done uh, okay, we've we are, Sid, Sid from we'd PlayStation earlier, would never we? have said that to Holly Bennett. He might have. He, I don't think he would. He, he's a he, pop. Anyway, best he, thing. Do, do, uh, do you have something? Did you write something I do. down, or is this just I sort of plucking pulled, out of I've your written, ginger head? I've literally written one thing down, and I'm just going to vamp off of it because mm. uh, I I heard about this category 19 minutes ago. So mm. this one might be a bit fluffy, but we're going to start strong. Uh, my best thing, my best thing of anything this year uh, mm. was getting my own VR helmet. Talk it about it. I'm sure you have because I know, anyway, but... I know that last. I think it last year. My best thing was playing with Pete's VR gear when Pete came down to visit uh, mm. and playing with Pete's one. Uh, so it kind of feels like a bit of a redo, but I don't care because now I have a VR helmet of my very own to play and experience and have fun with. Mm. Um, I'm going to cover some more about some of the games maybe later, shall we say? I see. Ooh, foreshadowing. Foreshadowing. Um, but for now, yeah. Uh, so when E3 uh, rolled around this year, um, as it normally does, sometimes hardware goes on sale. Mm. Um, they want you to buy a machine because, hey, look, look at the cool stuff that's coming. Now buy a machine and then you can play that stuff. Like, okay, cool. Like, yeah, fine. Um, and they put a really decent price out on the VR headset, which was the... Uh, PlayStation VR uh, with the camera that you need, the updated version of the camera. I did already have a camera, but it's got the the new one. Um, uh, Three games. You get the PlayStation VR Worlds game with it. You get the uh, Wipeout uh, HD VR thing, and you get Resi 7. Mm. Uh, And it was all of that for like 200 quid. I'm like, that's actually on the side of reasonable at this point like you had to you had to you were under strict instructions from your good lady to uh sell some stuff before you i got did it. yeah i was yeah I, oh i already had move controllers because they're like 70 pound for a pair now and i already had some from when i bought them to play and i am not kidding here resident evil 5 with those yeah that's and they what were, i bought my move controllers for and before before uh the vr headset they were about 50p in CEX, weren't they? <laughs> they were, oh my god, I was trying to find more because I wanted to play Johann Sebastian Joust with them, mm. but I just couldn't find any more anywhere because they sold out for like, and then the VR came in and now they're stupid expensive mm. again, which is kind of dumb, but you know, okay, fine, whatever. Um, so, yeah, I was under strict instructions that I had to, you know, sell things to make the money for them because we just keep buying shit. It's like, okay, no, that's fair enough. Um, so, I, I, the thing is, the, the deal was only on for a week. It's mm. like, well, I can't sell eBay stuff in a week because by the time it's gone through, it will be like 10 days' time. By the time I've got the money and got it all set. So I'm going to miss it. So I just bought the thing. Mm. Uh, and then when it turned up, I was like, right, the thing's here. And I made a promise to the Lord. I said, look, the thing is here. I'm going to place this thing upstairs on the table in the box. I'm not going to open the box until I've sold the things to make the money worth to sell the things. So I, I even like I could have opened it up there and then and gone straight in, but no, I actually waited a good two and a half weeks before I was out, allowed myself to open the box, mm. which I think kind of made it more fun, more special when it was there because it became like an event. It was a, uh, it was like an afternoon, and me and Laura sat there and, and took our time and opened it up and read the little picture manual and, and plugged everything in and made sure it was all right and twiddled with everything and spent probably an hour working out how to put the helmet on properly. Um, but yeah, that that first kind of afternoon of mucking about and downloading like and there's probably like 40 or 50 demos and like free experiences you can download now like Hmm. there's a lot of stuff 
So there's actually a demo disc of sorts you can download from the store. Uh, it has about 10 demos in it that you can download, muck about with. You can play things like uh, Thumper and Moss. Um, the Wipe I think Wipeout might be on there. Um, there's there's tons of stuff on there. Uh, some really weird, kooky little games as well. So you can try out loads and loads of stuff, and it gave me a lot of stuff to put on the list to pick up when it went on sale, or you know when I had a few quid spare. Um, so yeah, like that first couple of days of mucking around with the headset was just mm. was just so much fun. Um, you definitely find early on that you can only do a short amount of time, like you can do half an hour at a time before you need a bit of a break. But sort of now I've taken my time with it and I've got better at it. I, I find that I can now play with my headset for like an hour, two hours without feeling like dizzy or strange. Um, I picked up some fabulous, fabulous stuff this year. Um, really cool, weird little titles that we might not get to on this show, uh, but we might talk about in the following year on the new shows because they're a yeah. bit strange. Um, but yeah, no, actually having this new experience and this new way of playing, um, it's sure it's not the greatest of quality in the world, but you know, for the money I paid for it, I'm really not complaining. Um, yeah. I had a wonderful time. I'm still yet, um, I'm a colossal coward. I've yet to put in Resident Evil 7. Um, you see, I'm scared even, of it. Even beyond, um, like VR, I am kind of quite scared to play Resident Evil 7, so that might be a, a thing for the new year anyway. Like, yeah. Hey boys, stop being scared. That's an episode title. Yeah. <laughs> I'm up for twin, that if you are. Twin, ca- twin cowards. Yeah. Oh god, then I've got to actually do it though. Oh no. Do it. <laughs> oh, I'm afeared. You have put the fear in me for this year. Mm. Um so yeah, that that was my my best thing. I would have vamped a bit more, um, mm. but yeah, um, this 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 show is held together with sticky tape. Mm. So I yeah, it, uh, having a VR headset of my very own, to call my own. Um, I did. I, I've not put any stickers or anything on it. I kind of think that's a bit vulgar. I mm. want to keep it relatively clear. The body is a temple, uh, and it should not be vandalized. Mm. Uh, VR having a headset. That's my thing. Uh, oh, and also while we're here, showing it to other people has been delightful. Mm. Um, the game on the VR worlds thing where you go in like a, a cage and you go down into the a coral reef and look mm. around and then a, a shall we say very angry sharp dolphin turns up <laughs> and I kept saying oh yeah it's cool there's a dolphin that mm. turns up that's not a dolphin that is not a dolphin it's a dolphin just look at it no like I Every single person who tried it, I told them it's a dolphin. And they all <laughs> believed me. They all believed me at first. You're a bad man. I'm truly am Dr. Evil. So yeah, best thing, VR mm. headset. Um, I'm going to now pass the buck back to you. Here you go. Mm. Right, what's, uh, your, what's your best thing? My best thing, and this is something I've not to- uh, talked about on the show, um, but uh, my best thing is uh, Reformation 2 by Matt Gray. Uh, ah. yeah. so uh, um, if you've listened to the episodes of Sound of Play that I've been on there's been uh, a few slices of the first Reformation on there but to kind of explain fully um, I'm a big Commodore 64 nerd uh, it was my first computer on the one hand but also my first true love of music music that was mine the 64 came with a high-end synthesizer chip and the European musicians who created for it did so with absolute wonderment. The conversations were astounding. The talent was incredible. These were the days when the cassette was the popular choice for playing a game. And you may have to <laughs> wait eight minutes for that special something to load in beforehand. Now, the, 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 um, you'd sort of uh, you'd, you'd, you'd put your game in. There'd be sort of a few sort of bleeps and blaps on the screen. And then uh, the 64 featured loading screens and loading music meaning you've got your anticipation for your new game, uh, but within seconds, a picture would start to sort of evolve from the from the top of the screen, uh, and uh, a piece from a favourite musician would start to reveal before you. Uh, folks like me absolutely bought games based on the musicians involved, and these guys were my Beatles. My folks didn't understand it at all, but I was obsessed, and it was only in recent years when... Um, I've been picking up the likes of Retro Gamer. I found out how how young a lot of these musicians were. There was uh, the, the tale of one guy who had to get permission from his mum to travel to England to sign a contract for a game because <laughs> um, he was still at school. Um, and uh, in the early days, there were reports of the fact that there really wasn't any, uh, any software to make music. So these folks were uh, composing and then 
programming that into the system. Mm -hmm. Uh, So that, again, in in sort of hindsight, just makes me marvel at those early days of even more. But yeah, uh, um, a few years ago, one of my one of my heroes that I mentioned as as being my 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 Beatles like inspirations was a gent called Matt Gray, and he pitched uh, Reformation on Kickstarter. Now, Matt had, Matt had been working in pop music in the years following, but wanted to return to both his and other musicians' work and invest in reworking and remaking these classics. Mm-hmm. Uh, two examples are shown on the Kickstarter page. Uh, a piece of Matt's from The Last Ninja 2, which is one of the greatest soundtracks ever made, and a remaking of Rob Hubbard's Thala music from the game Sanction. I just sat there and I sobbed. <laughs> I was, I was like so so genuinely moved because it, it it sounded so so full and so huge but this was a connection sort of right back to you know me being a kid and like falling in love with music and as I've intimated on the show in the past that uh, that led to me being in bands for a long time uh and became a, a big part of my life and the the nucleus of that was uh was these Commodore 64 musicians so hearing things so referential but so massive uh just it it, it genuinely moved me uh i backed that reformation uh ripped the previews from matt soundcloud sorry matt and played them because <laughs> i you know as the, as the songs were evolving um the the you know incomplete previews would go on soundcloud and i was just like <gasps> Um, and I played them over and over, waiting for the final release when that arrived, which was five albums worth of songs, mind you. Mm. I just That's played hefty. I played them to death. I absolutely played them to death. Um, never once taking for granted just how good the songs were. Um, and if anything, just continuing to appreciate just how many buttons this was pushing with me. Uh, this year, Reformation 2 released. This one was a two-album affair with a couple of bonus tracks thrown in for, for good measure. Mm-hmm. Once again, it's absolutely god-tier astonishing. I've just played it to pieces, and it just continues to be my absolute favourite thing to listen to. Um, Matt Gray is amazingly talented, and all of these albums deserve to be bought by everybody. Uh, it's currently working on Reformation 3, and of course, I've, I've, I've backed it, so... Yeah, Reformation 2 by Matt Gray is my favourite thing. Could be anything. It's my favourite thing, thing of, uh, of last year. And uh, I'll have a word and I'll maybe see if I can get a piece for the end of the show. So uh, if there's something after we say bye, I got it. If there's not, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> it looked forward to that spot mm. surprise at the end. Mm. Good thing. So, yeah, thank you. Good thing. Do you know what? When we talked about this earlier, I didn't even think about music because, I mean, it's not a thing that I tend to mm. interact with that much. Outside of, like, having things on in the background, I don't mm. actively go out and seek music that much anymore. Um, being more of a podcast listener now, that takes up my ear time. So that's really cool. Mm. And, you know, I, I, as you see, if you um, follow me from Twitter, I do like to go out do. my days, days off and <laughs> sort of have a... Have a coffee and listen to music and do some writing and stuff. So, uh, but this, I'm a I'm a big fan of that picture you do where you can see a little bit of a laptop and a bit of mm. a coffee and a bit of a mm. a bit of a MP3 player. Mm. I like and that it, photo. Yeah, and it, it it appears a lot in various different forms. But uh, do you often... know what? The last one you put up, I saw the little tab at the bottom that had Goaty 2018. I thought I should really write some notes, shouldn't I? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I? I love that, and it's a it's a fab cafe that I go to as well. So it's, it provides it's... a. A nice bit of creativity on my on my days off, and you know, much of that is fueled by this album because it goes on a lot. So, um, plus, I, I bought one of the reasons for picking up a pre-owned um, iPod Classic fifth generation, which apparently mm. has the best sound processor of all the iPod Classics in there, um, which is known as like it's got like a, a dirty processor in there. It was supposed mm. to be sort of quite expensive, and I think Apple ended up shunting it afterwards because it was so expensive. Um, but hearing sort of the, the deep synth basses and growls on the, on uh, <laughs> uh, of of the um, of the keys on on this just works on on that uh, on that iPod big time. And one of the reasons I picked it up was for uh, for for these. So yeah, they're crunchy. Mm. 
Should we do another to... thing? All right then. Yeah, I, I know you've covered that all exceptionally well. The box has been racked. Okay. Now. I don't have you don't, you'd already taken one. <laughs> you already taken one, didn't you? Yeah, you had your moment. So quickly, we've thrown that out. <laughs> Pike down. Best telly. Best telly. Uh, do you want to go first, or shall I? We can. We can. We can do a to and fro. You can. You can do it if you want. Okay. We'll go you then me. I'll go. I'll go. Okay. Um, okay. So this year, I, I watched a lot of telly, um, mm. mostly anime, but I watched a lot of telly. Um, there was loads of good telly this year. Uh, we watched The Good Place for the first time. That was really fun. Really enjoyed that. Um, a couple of shows on Crunchyroll. We've got uh, Zombieland Saga at the end of the year, which was just wonderful. Uh, we started watching Overlord, which was good. Uh, JoJo Part 5 is back as well. Um, we've got Cells at Work, which is a show about the human body, which has been good. Uh, but none of those shows were my favourite show from this year. My favourite show from this year is not a show you're going to expect. Okay. Um, my favourite telly I watched this year uh, is an anime called Idolish 7. Go for it. Idolish 7 is a boy idol show. I know. Go I know. It. I, want to I know, know right? More. It's a Cons- show about seven sweet boys mm. who want to be an idol band. And they're wonderful sweet boys. Mm. Um, I put this on the Crunchyroll list as a joke. Because, do you do that thing where you scroll through and you just kind of go, yep, add that, yep, add that, that looks weird, add that, give that a go, yep, put that on, that looks silly. And before um, you know it, you've got a list as long as your arm and it's a pain in the ass to, to take them off afterwards. I've got a list as long as 15 arms. Mm. It's silly. Um, but we put, he saw it, it's like, oh, an, an idol show. Oh, it's got boys in it. Oh, that's unusual. Go on then, why not? And Nora was like, why? I went, I don't know, it looks fun. Um... Lo and behold, we started watching it as a, yeah, fuck it, go on, we'll watch that one. Yeah, we haven't got anything better to do tonight, we'll watch that. Oops, got addicted very quickly. Um, Because of the Sweet Sweet Boys, or because of the songs, or because of all of it? Kind of both, and all of it, in a way. The songs are actually quite fun. Um, Lots of English sort of mixed in the middle of it when you're not ready for it. Like, oh, I just said something, they just said fly, oh, that's cool. Um, all the boys are, as you would imagine, they're all very different. They've all got their own drives, their own reasons to be there, their own hopes, their own dreams, their own skills. Mm. Um, they, they, they bounce off each other quite a lot. They, they learn from each other. They, sometimes they split apart and then they come back better and stronger and more motivated than ever. Um, it's just really wholesome. Mm. It's a really wholesome show about people trying their best. Um, and sure, things go wrong sometimes. They they do a show at a stadium. They they shoot for the moon and book this big five hundred seat stadium, and mm. I think nine people turn up. Um, but they still give the best show they can. Mm. And for those nine people, they were like, "Yeah, that was amazing. Like they did their best." And they were a little bit bummed out. Like, no, we have to go out and do our best. Our best thing we can do. Um, they have a, a rivalry with an existing band called Trigger, um, a three piece band. Who there are there are links there. You will discover later. Uh, in the show um, but you know as you would imagine they kind of they rivalry for a bit and there's some eventual mutual respect at the end uh, Trigger uh, were so popular apparently they now have their own spin-off anime on YouTube on YouTube okay. Premium about them um, and apparently this is all based off of a mobile game um, called yep. I think it's called Idolish 7 and you kind of make your band and move through I think it's only available on the Japanese like app stores see that doesn't surprise me because I, I started watching uh Maybe a couple of years ago now, I'd started watching uh, The Idol Master, which okay. is um, a Korean drama about uh, a um, a pop band that's being put together and they lose their um, their most or their best sort of singer to this super super popular band who uh, mm-hmm. who lost their lead singer. Their lead singer died, and mm-hmm. um, within there was a big scandal, I think, because the the lead singer was having a um, having an affair, or she was. There was something going on that the press was sort of trying to track down, and mm-hmm. um, this band that's being built up end up finding uh, the dead girl's sister, who's always shunned the limelight and let her, you know, let the the other girl sort of take the limelight, and she just walked away from all that sort of stuff and she Mm. doesn't dance as well as a sister doesn't sing as well as a sister maybe because she's kind of stopped doing it so so her sister who ended up passing away uh could could get the the limelight and she sort of steps in and then 
the guy who her sister was was seeing ends up coming back as a producer, and he's not worked and uh, and since since the passing and this big rivalry with the band that their former most popular member has has gone over to, and it's wholly entertaining. <laughs> yeah. Like this, this was the same and, thing. But, I wasn't expecting it, right? But that's Ikaika. based on that's based on games and an anime as well. So, ah. mm. well, the thing I liked about this as well um, is that like none of the drama was about I like this girl. No, I like this girl more. Oh no! And then four uh-huh. episodes of arguing about the girl. There's none of that. There's absolutely none of that. Mm. It, it's more about them and the discussions and the differences and the you know the learning experience they get off of each other. There's there's some family stuff going on around that, but there's none like there's no love triangle to, to mm. speak of, which yeah. is I, I much do respect. Um, also, my favourite character uh, is the blonde guy who's from somewhere in Europe uh, <laughs> and speaks kind of broken Japanese. Is very very much into uh, an anime that exists in fiction called Magical Girl Kokona. Uh, See, and his I, room I, is full of magical girl Kokona, and that's how he says it, with that kind of wah, 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 kind of voice. See, I, I love spin-off stuff that doesn't exist, but uh, mm. but is in like shows and, and gets, books and things. He gets them all into it by the end of the series. Oh, that's fab. Yeah, and and every every time he talks, he kind of puts a, a little kind of death on the end. Like mm. every single time he spoke, I was grinning because his voice was very silly. Um, but again, he's. The, the the happy, wonderful heart of the show, I think, is probably him, more so than the main character. He's not even a main character. He's like mm. one of the, not backup singers, but, you know, he's one of the not main two or three. Um, well, what's the fan reaction to him and, and, and the the, uh, the anime that he loves? Like, he's, is that, he's that huge. Yeah. Um, well, like, this Kokona thing is massive and he's got his DVD box sets and then it's kind of getting in the way of his practice because he's watching the DVD too much and they try and take it away. He's like, no, my merchandise! Um, it's, it's magic um, and he's a very pretty boy they're all very very pretty mm. boys uh, he is probably the most pretty of all the pretty boys um, An- Anime is very good at doing that sort of thing though I remember watching uh, some episodes of Free the uh, that's the, the swimming the, one with the, the swimming, hair uh, yeah and the, the, all of <laughs> all of those boys are super super pretty boys um, mm. so yeah they, they do those those shows very very well mm. But yeah, that's. Uh, I've not got much more to say about it. I, I enjoyed it a lot. Um, I hope there's more. Um, I think it was only one season. Um, so, this this so, season on YouTube Premium, so I'm not going to pay for YouTube Premium. Uh, so I'm sure I'll find it somewhere. Uh, so tell people the name of the show again. So the show's called because um, it is a weird one. Idolish Seven, mm. like like relish, but with idol on front instead of rel. I think you've Idolish that Seven. And it's it's a good show. It's on Crunchy. It's really easy to find. Um, there's loads of stuff around it. it. It turns out it's a bigger franchise than I realised when we'd finished because mm. I googled it. Like, oh shit, it's a mobile game. Um, so yeah, Idolish Seven. Mm. Really enjoyed it. Really wholesome. Just just fun. Just a good show. Not even that long. It's only about mm. fifteen episodes. It, it bangs through nice and quick. Um, and it's yeah, it, it yeah, it's an idol show. But it, you know, give it a try. I, mm. I enjoyed it. And I I previously thought I only liked anime with big fun boys in it. I mean, these are big fun boys too, but they're kind I was, of. I've noticing a theme boys. here. Yeah, I'm just looking at my list, and it's all just cool boys. It's all boys, posing and power. Uh, right, my, that was my, my best telly. What about what about your best telly? What was your best telly? My best telly came and ride a build. Um, <gasps> uh, we it's been well covered on this show. Started. Are, are you brightly. just saying that? Are you just saying that because the box is nearby? No, I did genuinely. Don't <laughs> are, are you are you in time. trouble? <laughs> So it started brightly last year, uh, 12 episodes in, just tore the rug from underneath everything and started moving on at a crazy brilliant pace. It was utterly unpredictable, emotional, warm, and it balanced out utter despair and impossible odds with humour, bravery, and the brilliance of hope. There were no bad episodes. Uh, The film I saw was stupendous fun. Uh, The ending didn't... Uh, disappoint in the slightest and I have a spin-off movie and two films yet to see um, which just haven't been subbed yet. Uh, I remain forever changed by these characters being in my life and will genuinely love them forever. Um, so yeah, came and ride a build. That was that was quick and succinct. Well, we, we've spoken about it on the show so it's just we giving have. people kind of a, um, a, a wee bit of a heads up for, for the stuff that I have gone into in the, in the past, but it's it's nice to see uh, a show that was like forty odd episodes, and then you know this 
three movies and a spin-off movie. Uh, I've only seen one of those movies, but the movie was fab as well and was like a huge crossover with, with other Kamen Rider characters. And um, They love doing that, don't they, when they kind of bring old ones back. Like, oh, it's that guy! I love it. They, they've recently done... Um, there's a, a the new the new one is Kamen Rider Zio and the um, they've done a a film which is sort of build as <laughs> build B I double L E D as as a, uh. build, a, a Kamen Rider build and Kamen Rider Zio film but with uh, with you know with the characters coming back into it and stuff and there was one actor who's now one of the biggest actors in Japan who started out in a Kamen Rider series. And they kept it secret right up until the, the the point where the first screenings were in. No people went in having no idea this character was in there, and that the actor was playing him. And um, I saw I saw stuff on Twitter where they said like people were crying in the cinema uh-huh. because nobody thought he'd do it. Uh, obviously, all of these the the people that have gone on to do bigger stuff were always kind of super booked up. But uh, they were apparently taking him to to set with like uh, underground methods and stuff, uh, <laughs> and, and, and trying to get him there so nobody knew. And they kept that secret right until the showing, which is superb. Um, but That's cool. it's, on the fa- on the face of it, it seems to be uh, this sort of build and, and zero film seems to be a world where uh, like really bad stuff is happening, and Kame Rider is a TV show that kids watch to kind of pick themselves up or to give themselves hope. And uh, it's a, it seems to be about the uh, certain people being drawn to certain places and they are the people that are the Cayman Riders and they kind of realise that they are these people. <laughs> Chokes me oh, up. Shit. They've <laughs> yeah. done it again. <laughs> yeah. So, and, you know, I, I've always taken a, a great amount of... Uh, sort of joy from the way that it dissolves the real world and there's so much bravery within you know humor and hope and the fact that when everything seems to be lost that somebody can stand up and smile and just walk forward that's huge in these times Mm. but yeah so i'm I'm really excited to to see the film it looks fab super Um, yes me getting super stupid emotional again. Right, I'll check the box. Check the box. Mm. When? Oh dear. I stopped it when you said. What 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 came out? Fave film. Film. Ooh, we're doing it. Film. Um, I thought you were like, oh, just, just, oh shit. <laughs> oh, yeah, hang on. For it. Uh, I'll, okay, I'll go first. Um, I didn't see many films this year. Um, I didn't go to the cinema that much, and the times I did go were usually not that amazing. Uh, mm. I think we only went to the cinema twice and don't really watch films that much at home anymore because I'm kind of like watching telly and YouTube and anime now. Um, but I'll tell you one film I did go see, mm. uh, which I really enjoyed, uh, a film I went to go see on my birthday, mm. um, it's Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. I still really, really want to see this. And I have- Holy... God damn. Holy god damn. I didn't know they made films like that. Mm. Like, so, obviously, people probably know what that is, you know. Uh, it, it, the it, is quite, it is quite a popular thing, considering it's pretty big all at the, the minute. Yeah, I imagine if you're. Strange stuff we talk about. If you're listening and your name isn't CJ, you've probably seen it. Mm. Um, so I'll, I will be brief. Um, but it manages to be, like, cool and funny and fun. All at the mm. same time, which is really hard to do, I find. Mm. Like, things are either so cool that they get a bit po-faced and serious, or they try too much to be silly and end up just being a bit of, you know, oh, mindless fluff. This manages everything. It manages an amazing story throughout the middle of it as well. Um, it manages to introduce seven separate Spider-Men, and mm. it doesn't feel like it's going on and on and on about it. Like, you get everything you need, and you move on with your day. It, mm. it, Oh just, oh, just the direction, just the action scenes are incredible. The animation, like, you, nobody makes films that look like this. Like, the animation is so out there and so different. And it's like, this this could be the start of something that's, for comic that's book films. One of the things that I've um, I've really enjoyed from seeing the, the overspill of this is 
not only kids that realize that there's a that they can be a spider-man whether it be mm. miles or gwen or you know just seeing kids come home and start playing or start drawing themselves as a spider-man that's that's been great to see on twitter um but also mm. i mean you realize that so so much of the talent that's involved in animation is just lost to us it's it you know we we see the uh, we see the film we see the studio maybe the director that's it and on twitter the animators have been uh, encouraged to say what they worked on and who mm. who was who was there and why they did the choices that they did and this this constant conversation about it and i love it it's wonderful to see these amazingly talented people that are now stepping out and just going like yeah, I did this, and I did this bit. On oh, this, this took this this long to do, and this is why we mm. we we went in this direction. And I, <laughs> it makes it more than just the direct, the, you know, the directors and the and the the name of the company and the the film itself. You you realise how many amazing folks are are involved in it. Yeah, I've seen I've seen a few of those, and I've done some animation at uni. I know mm. how hard it is. Like, it, I could barely make uh, a man shuffle like some sort of put together Frankenstein person. Um, let alone just the just the visual acrobatics that these guys have managed to put together, and it's so seamless and it works so well. And there's personality in every single action. Um, you know which Spider-Man you're looking at, regardless, like if you can even see their outfit, because you know mm. the way they move. Like they they all move differently. They have their own styles. Like outside the fact that Nicolas Cage is one wears a coat, but you know um, the soundtrack I think deserves a nod as well. The soundtrack is phenomenal. There was a, there was a song on the radio so for good. that this morning. And it was really good. Was there really? Which one? Yeah, it was Sunflower or something like that. It was called. Well, the it was... no, 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 Sunflower. No, 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 yeah, no. It, it was really, really great. Um, um, so... Something that the film gets right as well. Uh, Miles actually sings along to that song in his room at the start, um, and the, the film isn't afraid to let him get the lyrics wrong. Oh, I love that. That's really cool. Because it is literally no, 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 Sunflower. Mm. Hey, <laughs> with the sort of mumbling. Uh, Miles is incredible. Um, he is a worthy Spider-Man. Um, again, this is the best Spider-Man film. This, this is no joke, the best Spider-Man film. And I don't really watch like the Marvel cinematic films anymore. Hmm. Um, I'll catch them if I'm nearby. Like, I mean, I saw, I, I really enjoyed Ragnarok. I thought that was a good laugh. Um, but like things like Infinity War, just it doesn't do much for me. Like, I'm, it looks grim, and that's no, not he's... what. I kind of want to. I kind of yeah. can't be bothered with it at the moment. I, I if it comes on Netflix, I'll probably watch it, but I'm not going to seek it out. We, um, I mean, we we are at uh, polar opposites with with uh, Thor Rothalol. Um yeah. but I I I don't know. I, I I like to jump into the Marvel stuff that, and like rent one on like a Saturday night. I don't mind a a, a popcorn film on a Saturday night. And I thought. Mm. Um, Thought Black Panther was okay. Uh, hated the fight scenes. Really hated the fight scenes. Okay. Um, there was lots of somebody striking somebody, and then an instant camera cut. Like, and I, oh. I, I just felt felt really uh, jarring compared to like the action sequences and say cars and stuff like that. But the film was was entertaining. I I quite enjoyed Infinity War. Um, I, I must yeah. admit it was. Uh, don't rule that one out, especially because it um, uh, it it's a pretty much a continuation from. Thor Ruffalo, um, <laughs> so uh, I reckon I reckon you might dig that. It's it's uh, it's, I don't it's know. been it's on my mind a lot serious... since. Yeah, the bigger the bigger they try and go, the more I seem to not care. It's weird. The smaller the smaller films are the one I enjoy a lot more, where it's just I a d- character. Or I a did couple see of them. in that regard. I saw Ant Man two and really enjoyed it. Oh, I'm, I, re- I, d- I really liked the first one, and I really liked the second one. And I I, I suppose this this does tie into like the smaller films, but yeah. um. <laughs> <laughs> it was it was the film that um, maybe I had the least expectations of, given what uh, the way that people had spoken about it, and I I properly enjoyed it as much as the first one, and then I saw uh, Deadpool two and thought it was terrible, and I enjoyed the first Deadpool. So, uh, but yeah, um, you know, popcorn movies. We really are going both ways, aren't we? Night. It's yeah, weird like, that. Yeah. Although the film um, that I didn't expect to 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 enjoy as much as I did was uh, Solo, which was I loved. It was it was a western. Oh, that was a thing, wasn't it? Yeah. It was a western with the Millennium Falcon, um, and uh, yeah, I, I I enjoyed Solo. I bought it straight after. So, I've, um, I've I've still not seen that or the Last Jedi. Um, hmm, Last Jedi. Hmm. 
Last year, my choice was either Last Jedi or Jumanji, and I chose Jumanji, and I think I made the right choice. Yeah. Dwayne The Rock Johnson doing Dwayne The Rock Johnson stuff in a jungle. I'm in. I, I, I think I bought that to rent it, and then switched it off after about 15 minutes. Because it made, it, made, it made my teeth hurt. It's not a good film, but it's a fun film. Mm. I enjoyed it. I had a good time. Step um, in the eyes. One, one last thing before we move on. Mm. Um, I think a credit needs to go to the Peter Peter B. Parker, the standard Spider-Man, the slightly mm. chubby, older, grumpy one mm. that comes through. Just perfect. Just, just absolutely mm. perfect. Just plays that older, grumpier... Life's gone a bit downhill. Hmm. He's still Spider Man, but you know he's getting that paunch on. You know he's he's hitting middle age. It's not exactly life's not exactly working out well for him anymore. Hmm. Um, he's he's kind of I don't know, kind of like not enthused about much, and kind of goes along with stuff because he has to. It, it it's a great take on the character, and like his oh, like arc by the end is just more. Oh my god! And the scene where Miles finally puts on the suit. Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs> that oh, to see it. that's that's the one they put on YouTube to kind of show it off. There is so much symbolism and stuff that you get when you watch the film. Like, oh my god, every little scene has something like a callback or like a reference to an earlier thing where something went wrong and now he's doing it right. Like, oh my god, it's amazing. It's Miles rising. You know, the, the shot you've seen where he's falling off the... the uh, he jumps off the main building uh, mm. and they frame it so he's kind of falling upwards and the city's above. Yeah. The, the, the thing I saw about that was he's not falling. This is... He, he's rising. It's like, oh, Yes! Oh, yeah. Yes, it's so good. I would watch that film eighty-seven more times right now. You see, this. Is I wanted to go back in. Well, I it... wanted to go back into the cinema. I wanted to turn around, buy another ticket, and go back in. Because you see, we we are within a, a vacuum within uh, Twitter and the the things that we see and uh, the opinions are of our, our friends that that speak about it. And I remember seeing something mm. that about that Into the Spider Verse hasn't really done as well as kind of everybody expected it to. But I think mm. the differential is everybody's going to buy it when it hits home release. Hell everybody. Yeah. And even the people that haven't seen it are going to buy it on home release. Cause it, even it's if the I film don't... where they buy it and they're going to be bummed out they didn't see it in the cinema because, oh my God, to see it in a fucking cinema. 100%. Yeah. It's I, worth the big screen. Even if, even if I don't get to see it on the cinema, I'm, you know, I'm buying it on 4K Blu-ray. It's, it's not even mm. a... Uh, it's not even a a second guess in that regard so um, yeah yeah and I, from a personal point of view it's something i've spoken about before but uh i am a huge fan of gerard way so it's nice mm-hmm. to see gerard's penny parker uh yeah. taking taking a uh, a bit of an appearance in there oh and to give you another thing um i know who you are i know the things you like you will like this yeah it doesn't surprise there's me there's some stuff in there you're gonna you're gonna send me tweets when you've seen it and you're gonna be like oh my god is this because I am an emotional animal that that, that very much likes joy? Yes. Mm. That's good. You're, you're going to love it. More oh. of that in our superhero stuff, please. Joy, please. The, the West can be quite quite grim. Inject the joy like a spider injecting its radioactive venom, but the venom is joy. Oh dear. And the man is film. You, you kind of rescued that a bit towards the end. I was quite surprised. Thanks. Thanks. <laughs> So that's my favourite film. I know mm. I saw it like two weeks ago, but that doesn't matter. It was still the best film I saw last year. Um, I'm going to pass down to you. CJ, mm. what was your favourite film? My favourite film, uh, apologies to Irish listeners, um, was uh, Garo Kamino Kiba. Uh, we Ooh. covered this in the last episode of Over Humanities. Uh, the uh, TLDR is three shining Makai knights existing in the everyday world fighting horrors. Creatures disguised as humans, taking advantage of our weaker moments, devouring us as food, living our lives. The Makai Knights, Ryuga, Takaru and Agari, have their armour stolen by a Makai priest called Banabi, who intends to use the power to resurrect her dead lover for one more night. As devious as these plans are, the horrors of designs on the process and instead wish to bring back their, their own long-lost son, the evil Jinga. To then build Kamino Kiba, the Fang of God, taking the horrors to the moon where they will rule over all humanity. I've watched it over and over. I've fallen way into this franchise. And the spin off series, Kamino Kiba Jinga, is nearly at its final episode and has been a belter. Uh, so, yeah. I see it's been a big year for you for film, isn't it, as well? Like, yeah. I, was, I had a few things I was betting you to say there. 
Um, I, I was wondering if it's going to be one of your Arrow films or your your, your, your Italian westerns you've been enjoying this year. I've you've had a good into, film year. I've fallen into a, um, a few bits, and there's, there's one that I've not had chance to dive into, which I bought called the Bloodthirsty Trilogy. Okay. And it's a series, uh, it's by Toei, who own like, Godzilla and stuff. But it's um, the three films uh, from the early 1970s, which are the only time that Japan has done Dracula. Oh. Yeah. So um, as soon as I saw the premise for those, I was like, yeah, I think I'm, think I'm up for that. So, I, But I haven't had time to, to dive into them yet. But you're, you're right. It's been a nice little voyage into the unknown with things like Italian Westerns and... Uh, uh, that's that's ongoing. So uh, although I still haven't played the the horse cowboy game, which is a strange one, really. <laughs> well, put the subtitles in Italian. Put the voice in Italian. That probably help, right? I I always have it in Italian. There you go. There you go. Sorted. Mm. Although it is a strange one with Italian westerns, and I, I probably mentioned this on the show, but when they film uh, them, they don't record the voices. They overdub them afterwards, even in Italian. So the, okay. the the American dub is obviously dubbed over, but the Italian dub is also dubbed over. Um, so it takes a little getting into, but um, not too long. But you get there. It's bizarre. The, the films are good enough anyway. So yeah, mm. that's really strange. Mm. I suppose I, well, it means I th- they haven't I think... got to worry about recording audio on site. They can just record the film and do that later. I, well, it's similar hmm. similar with uh, with Hong Kong cinema anyway. Um, so it, and they they share the aspect of. Uh, Television uptake in the sixties in both of both the Far East and in uh, and in Italy just wasn't the same as the rest of the world. So going mm. out to the cinema was was a big deal. So they they made those the films quick and fast. But that's that continues even up to some of the Italian horror movies I've seen from the eighties. Um, okay. So yeah, it's it's an, an interesting quirk. But you know you you fall into it with the by when at the point that you embrace the legacy, I guess. Ooh. So yes. Ooh. Anything more to add? You you were going to watch this. Oh, I remember you. You were know what it's like. This. It's on the list. I've got it. I've got the link saved. Um, it's just finding an evening to sit down and actually watch it. Um, I tend to find in the evenings. I don't. I, I, this is why this is kind of fills into what I do. I don't watch a lot of films anymore because mm. by the time I get to the point where like oh let's put the telly on. What's what we got to watch? It's ten o'clock. I'm kind of knackered. It's like I don't feel like a two hour film right Probably, now. this is this is a cent- well, It's ninety minutes. Um, but this is essentially the most live action anime that you will ever see, <laughs> plus the best Batman I've ever seen. As, as so, a man who watched the JoJo uh, live action film this year, that that's a bold statement. I I did, and I I'm a, I watched I'm it really, too. I enjoyed it. It was okay. I'm a really it big fan. I'm a really big fan of the director. He did um, he did Blade of the Immortal uh, this year, which I, I, I didn't get chance to talk about but was kind of one of those films where you you enjoyed its its victories and you enjoyed its flaws and mm. stuff but the uh the lead actor of uh this in blade the immortal is the lead actor in judgment that's coming from the guys that did yakuza oh cool like saints mm. row yakuza yeah, i don't is oh, what i've could... seen all the things i've seen look over the top and dumb as mm. hell but in a way that i like well, apparently, this actor, um, whatever he's in in Japan, there's a there's a spike in those episodes. So wherever he guests, uh, he's uh, it sort of really sort of ramps up. But yeah, I'm some I, I am interested in Judgment or Judge Eyes, as it's called over there. Um, but uh, yeah, that's a, just a, a wee that bit game of an looks aside. Proper that game looks proper. Mm, it looks a laugh. He's on a skateboard. He does a kickflip, kicks a man in the face, and leaps off of his face in a different direction. Yes, this, this the, that's the that's the sequence where you see him trailing the car, yep. isn't it? And it's, yeah, it, it looks good. I'm up for that. That's, it's like they thought, let's make a game for Paddy. Like, okay, no, the game for Paddy, I'd say, would be that Fist of the North Star game, which by the people that did Yakuza, which looks mental. It does look weird. I'm not really a Fist of the North Star fan. I've never doesn't matter. I, it. I think it will tap into your your JoJo stroke utter weirdness thing. And there's a point where you become a bartender. And I think you're shaking the dual shock to mix drinks in it. Okay. That's wonky. I'm into it. Oh my god, is that the box? Mm. Whoa. Alright then, I will. I thought you'd stopped. The shaking stopped. Bam. 
best book. Best book? Ooh, best book. You, you just, had me uh, worried you'd not read anything down there. Best shit, book? I can't read. I can't read. <laughs> Sorry, um, somebody put a question mark on the end of the teleprompter. What's a book? Um, I'm just going to find that bit of my notes. Um, Some people just don't read anymore, Pat. They don't. I'm reading now. I found it. Best book. Right. Um, again, I've read <laughs> You're a lot of your stuff. Notes. I'm reading my notes. My best book is my notes. Um, I read a lot of books again this year. Uh, lots of comics. Lots of comics. Not many book books. I, I did a lot of rereads this year. Um, stuff that I like in my uh, Marcus Heights Dwarf books that I really enjoy. I read all those again. Uh, I've been going through my Jabba Crombie books again. Really, really enjoying those. So, And a, a bunch of Discord stuff since uh, Terry Pratchett died. It's kind of like nice to read one every now and again. Because um, those books were a big part of me growing up, and I still enjoy them. Mm. Um, but I read a lot of new stuff. Um, I, re- I actually read Battle Royale for the first time um, All right, after okay. rereading through uh, Kami Sama no Itoru, which is As the Gods Will, which is the series that I read. Uh... And you watched a film of, and it turned out that there was another series of the manga that that film was based off. And I was reading the second series, and I didn't know. I still hope they do a second film of that because it, it does leave a cliffhanger that makes me want to see more. But oh, oh, the, the, yeah, the, and the manga goes places. It's it's very, very, very good. You should watch the um, film. It's a good film. Same, I did. Same. I same did direct- watch the film. I. You see, I didn't know this. That's the same director as uh, Blade of the Immortal and Jojo. Ah, cool. Uh, that yeah. makes sense actually. Mm. Yeah. No, I enjoyed the film. It was fun. Um, different a bit from the actual book. Mm. Uh, but it was fun. Um, Plus, um, my my boy from Came on Rider Four is a. Uh, uh, Sota Fukushi playing the lead, who is. is fantastic. Also, that <laughs> the, the sequence with the the lucky cat and the gym is yep. just brilliant. Yeah, terrifying and brilliant. And you would you would have as as much as you see sort of you know realistic and gory stuff in the West, being terrified of a Makami a, a Makrami polar bear who wants you to figure out which one of of you is lying, otherwise he's going to kill you all. Yep. Fab, just fab. Also, peg dolls that dance around you blindfold, and if you yep. don't guess who's behind you, they will bludgeon Smash you to you. death. Yep. I, I just thought it was as a horror film as well. I thought it was really different. Mm. It's a good, it's a good film. I enjoyed mm. that a lot, and it, mm. it is different again from the manga. Like I think you would gain a lot by reading the manga as well because it goes oh, a different cool. way. The manga, so the first series then ties into the second series, which follows a different bunch of people, but then it kind of converges together, kind of halfway through the second one. Because um, they are kind of the, the special children that are being tested by yeah. uh, strange by God. forces. Yeah, yeah, God's children. Um, mm. But that's not a book. That's not my favorite book, though. Um, so because I read that I read a lot of Battle Royale stuff as well I read Battle Royale I read Gantz which was alright and it kind of goes downhill a bit near the end um, I enjoyed the films the films were okay um, I got to like the third or fourth Monster Night on Gantz and kind of drifted away it kind of was no I mean I, the to. live action films are really good oh I watched one of them a while ago I don't think I got it but this was years ago mm. um, uh, I read loads of 2000 AD this year as well um, a load, bit more Dread some great Dread stuff I read this year uh, Rogue Trooper, Robo Hunter. I read Bad Company for the first time this year as well, which was mm-hmm. way more like adult than I was expecting it to be. Um, but my favourite thing I actually read, which I finally, after about four times trying to get into it, I finally got into it. Berserk. Yeah, you, you mentioned this on a on a, a recent show. I did. Show. It finally oh, it the, happened. It was, it was the uh, the uh, Garrow show actually. <laughs> Yeah, it was. Yeah, we, we just uh, let's just do the last four shows. Really listen to them. That's game of the year. Um, no, this is like like I say, it's probably the fourth time I have tried to get into it. Um, I've read the first chapter so many times, I just kind of drift on it. It's like Ugh, I'm not getting this, but I thought, no, I'm going to push through. Everyone saying this is amazing. All the Souls people that I like say it's good and that they enjoy it. Like I'm going to push through at least another kind of couple of arcs of the story and see if I get it. Um, the trick is when you get past the Snake Man introduction section. To like the flashback where you kind of go back in time, that's when the story actually I think starts. Mm. Um, you're kind of the the first the first arc of the story is more of a, a mood setter for later. Um, you actually don't get that kind of story out of the the manga for another like you know ten or eleven volumes. Like it, it kind of goes back into the past and it follows the the ascent of these you know this young mercenary company for a good long time. Like a good third of the current manga is the first bit of the lead up to the way it actually begins almost um it's it's a really gripping story um and that you know from the intro which is i suppose why they put it on that 
terrible bad things are coming uh, and that Griffith is a piece of shit but you don't know why um, but you can't stop reading it once you're in it's I was up every single night like banging through it like you know 10 or 11 issues a night just trying mm. to get through this art to find out what the hell's going to happen um, it, it's got a great cast of characters that like you root for the entire way um, Griffith is enigmatic he's mysterious he's terrifying um, but also kind of like benevolent and it's a real really well written character I thought you know really unlike anything I've seen before um, we ended up watching the anime as well from the late 90s which we oh, enjoyed yeah. as well um, great soundtrack as well really good soundtrack on that um, uh, Laura's not interested in reading the book but we sat there and watched the anime it's all on YouTube just literally put in Berserk in YouTube and it comes up there's the whole mm. thing uh, I think there's the movies the later parts as well which we've not got to yet but we will eventually um, I don't want to watch the main, the anime that came out two years ago because apparently the animation is hideous mm. I watched the and first of the of the movies the Golden Egg I think it was that was that was pretty good yeah that's that's the one I'm, I'm waiting to, to get into um, some of the later story arcs once you get kind of past that stuff are quite grand quite gross um, there's lots of like monster body horror stuff Mm. Um, and it's sometimes quite hard to read um, because there's a lot of like large sword chops and monster teeth and faces and it's it's not like anything I've read before um, I mean it's very very unique even though it's hard to read I'm glad I've progressed and I've I've caught up to the release date now I've got I've read everything now um, mm. and now I've I think it's on hiatus again which is I now understand now because I, I the thing i knew about berserk is that it goes on hiatus and people are like oh it's on hiatus again i need to know what happens i'm like ah it's probably not that bad now i'm at the point where i want to know what's going on like, <laughs> like no Come put on. more out come on i want to know i want to know what's happening big things have just happened i want to know um so yeah uh berserk best thing i read this year by by away i think i i read a bunch of stuff but berserk uh, had the most impact by far right yeah what about you? What's the best um, series of pages with words on that you enjoyed? Uh, my best book is IQ84 by Haruki Murakami. Ah, I've heard of this, but I've never looked into it. Everyone talks about it. Uh, I've been trying to make more time for reading. Uh, the challenges that I have with hours and fatigue lead me to pushing away something that I genuinely love doing. So on late starts and days off, I'm reading a chapter in the bath before kicking on with the day. Puts the mm. mind in a good place as well as inspiring excitement for the chapter to follow. Uh, Murakami is my favourite author. Everything I've read by him has been superb and at no point has he ever let me down with an ending. I was going confused but engaged. He introduced concepts which are fascinating, wonderful characters. And when he starts pulling the strings of all of those closer and closer together, it's always thrilled me to bits. Uh, IQ84 is... I think a thousand pages and the version okay. i'm reading is split over three books and is in sort of a, a darling little slip case the u.s versions of his work have all got these extraordinarily beautiful covers they're so well designed and, and wonderfully colorful the uk versions are utterly utterly bollocks and each revision has seen equally terrible designs which is uh kind of baffling really but the the book depository over here uh offer up the american uh covers so i've been slowly oh, cool. collecting those as I've, as I've gone along so uh iq 84 covers two stories uh two characters each with alternating chapters uh the first uh Ayamame, i think her name is uh mm -hmm. which which apparently has the kanji for green peas in it uh it begins with her trying to get to a meeting but she's struck in a traffic jam on the motorway the taxi driver suggests that there's an old petrol station nearby which features a stairway that no one knows about, like an express stairway. Uh, climbing down that will lead her out of the gridlock. She can catch a train and get to her meeting. But she's warned that however much the world beyond might seem like a different world, it's important to realise that it's the same. The second character, Tengo, teaches maths at a cram school whilst working on his own novel. He's long since been courted by a publisher for his talent, but nothing he's worked on has thus far been released. His editor has received a manuscript for a novel called Air Chrysalis. It's sparse but has a certain magical quality about it and originates from a very introverted 17-year-old girl. Uh, Tengo is courted into rewriting the novel for publication uh, and enters into a dubious pact that the end result is fully the work of the girl, knowing that should the truth be revealed, 
everyone is in trouble. Uh, the way each of those stories twist, evolve, and eventually dovetail is incredible. It's tense, it's scary, it's perverted, it's imaginative, it's just brilliant. Uh, at this point, I'm about 900 pages through, and even at this time, I flat out do not want it to end, and do not want to say goodbye to these characters. Uh, I'm really, really, really sold by it, and seeing as... Uh, Hardboard Wonderland and the End in the World by Murakami is probably my favourite novel ever. Uh, this is absolutely up with it. Um, I'm I'm astonished by it. I'm really spellbound. Uh, and I, at this point, I still have no idea how it's going to end, um, <laughs> which is just wonderful for for a novel that long to uh, to really have no filler and no gaps and. And even in the quieter moments, is still utterly bewitching. So that's great because the worry mm. when you have a long novel like that is I've been put off a couple of books uh, by the page count because I've had a couple of bad experiences with. Oh fuck! What was it? Dune. Oh my god, Dune. Mm. I, I was enjoying it, but my god, that book was overwritten so so much. Um, so it's cool to hear that it, it you know it gets on with the story kind of. It doesn't hang around and like overly wordify every single sentence which is what Dune did and you spend the first chapter going what the fuck is a quiz act had right? come on I mean, like, if, it's a thousand, if it's 900 pages and you're still gripped that's a really good thing Murakami's a, um, one of the, the aspects that I love in his work is he's always uh, that music always plays a, a huge part mm-hmm. and it's led me into um, one of the one of the key moments in uh, the taxi at the start and certainly at certain points further on in uh, in the novel is uh, Sinfonietta by Janacek, which is a, um, a classical piece, which, okay. I, which I dug out and listened to and is astonishing. Um, but there's, you know, there's, there's references to, to blues albums and real uh, sort of minutiae within, uh, within that. And yeah, it's, it's just, it's fun to have these little satellite aspects which you then go on the hunt for afterwards but man Symphony Etta by Janacek I would never have gone near in a in a million years and actually led me to a conversation uh, with a lad that I worked with um, probably for the last year and we had a conversation about classical music and um, so that was um, that was really neat as a you know a little little bounce away but yeah it's it's fantastic Um, IQ 84 by um Wiki Murakami. Cool. I see. I see it quite round, and I will. I will. I will definitely grab that because that sounds really interesting. Mm, it's, um, and part of my thing this year is I'm trying to read a bit more as well because again I kind of I have all these books upstairs that I haven't read. I've just been rereading stuff, so like I'm, I'm trying to read new stuff this year, mm. and that would fit quite nicely. Like I say, it's it's just nice to have that that thing whereby a chapter in the bath is just perfect it's essentially like a little episode and i can really look forward to the next the next one plus with the um with the alternating characters as well mm. oftentimes i'll i'll finish uh, a, a chapter on uh Aomame and i'll see tengo on the next on the next page <laughs> and i'll be like oh, what's happening um and uh yeah it's it's been it's been great i've really enjoyed it really i did enjoyed that it. with that's. I was trying to remember what that reminded me of. I did that with Game of Thrones because again, those chapters are each different character's viewpoint, and they're they mm. kind of bath consumable. You can you can sit in the bath twenty minutes, enjoy the chapter, and then get on with it. And again, you see that it's oh, the next chapter's a cool one though. I want to read that one as well. It oh. has gotten to the point though at times where I'm just like, I have to go straight into the next chapter. I have yeah. to go straight into the next chapter. And the um, I I mean, one of my most uh, vivid reading memories is a Murakami one with with Hardboiled Wonderland and the End of the World where my final swipe with that book was four or five hours in the bath Oof! and I was literally like running hot water in uh, and just the the rationale would be get out get dry get dressed uh, sit down read some more there was no way I could let go of that book it would not let me let me go, and to have an author and a story that just bewitches you to that kind of degree is super special. And um, you know, I'll, I'll I'll still remember that that novel for the rest of my life. 
Um, and th- a, there's a piece of music that's referenced towards the uh, the end of the book where um, I, I I sort it out like as soon as I got an, gotten out and, and finished the finished the book and gotten out of the bath. And every now and again, I will get a message uh, from the comment that I placed on YouTube uh, when I was listening to like this piece. I was like, I'm here because of hard, hard boy Wonderland and the end of the world. And every now and again, there'll be a comment, somebody going like, yeah, me as well. Uh-huh. And that's, that, it, that continues the legacy. So it's, um, it's pretty neat. That's rad. Hmm. Oh, my God, the box turns. I, I'm going to say, uh, When? Okay, I stopped and opened it when you said... This is a sham. This is a sham. This isn't working. You are the poo in my sham. This... <laughs> oh! That was good. Biggest surprise. Whoa. Okay. Uh, yeah, this is a good one. Uh, let me mm, just find my notes. Uh, just roll down. Roll down, roll down. It's down the bottom. Here we go. Um, okay, biggest surprise for me uh, was uh, Resi 2 being real... And looking really, really good. Oh yeah, because I was I, terrified. It it did come out of nowhere when uh, when it was finally revealed, and just looked super special. And the um, mm. the bit with the 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 cop in the in the police station and the conversation they had was really, really emotional, really sinister, yep. and yep. so well acted. Yep. So they're, they're basically pulling what they did with, with remake of the first one. Is they're going back to using the tips and tricks that they've learned in several Resident Evil games to make the best version. And it's it's a different game. It's it's not a a, a copy paste of Resi Two. You know, it's it's its own game. Things have been altered. The flow's different. You're still in the police station, but the you know, doors are different and stuff's in different places. And it, it's played with that Resi Four camera the over the shoulder which i've been calling resident evil 4 divided by 2 which i think is a good way of describing how it looks um but yeah i did not know it was a real thing until that e3 show uh, i heard it rumored but i wasn't sure about it and then uh the the jump the trailer where it was like a storeroom and you were the point of view of a rat running around on the floor yeah and it climbs up and it's like that's a playstation one on the table what does that mean <laughs> and not and not getting it not getting it like Huh, that's interesting. Uh, you know, it was PlayStation, they're showing off PlayStation console, that's kind of cute. And they run around and the, the cabinet falls over, there's a struggle, uh, the rat gets squished. I'm still thinking, oh, okay, there's some sort of zombie game. Okay, this is a thing. Still, not not linking it together, not getting it. Um, even to the point where the zombie was chewing the neck of the guy in the, the thing, because he just had a regular, you know, like, regular police uniform on. I was like, I, I don't know what this is, this looks really strange. Like, even though, looking back now... It's so painfully obvious what it is. I only got it when the zombie got shot and it cuts around to Leon and I actually went, Ah! And Leon looks boss. He doesn't look... Even though he doesn't doesn't look ginger enough. Leon in Resi 2 was ginger. There's only like five ginger characters. (laughs) Ah! There's like five ginger... We've got Crash Bandicoot, we've got Huarang from Tekken and we've got that stupid what's-her-face from the Horizon game. That's all we've got now. Um... They've 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 made Leon. They've whitewashed him. They've they've blonde washed Leon, <laughs> and that upsets they've, me. They've coffee washed him. Oh, that's that's good. Um, but yeah, everything we've heard about the game since sounds amazing. Uh, the fact that the Mister X, um, or I always called him the Terminator character from the second playthrough, will just follow you around the whole mansion. Now he will follow you around the police station and not stop. You will hear him coming. Um, so there's a constant like edge of like gotta go, gotta go, gotta go, gotta go. Bad guys coming, gotta go. Um, Christ, Laura nearly died when I showed her. She went, "Oh my god, it's real!" Yes, please. Um, so that's a definite thing that's happening. I would like to put a quick shout out to the special edition they're making that has a keyboard that is looks like a typewriter. Like, <laughs> I mean, it's like six hundred quid, but like, I do want one? No, I can't afford it. It's a bad purchase. <laughs> the boiler's on the blink. Come on, we've got to fix the boiler first. However typewriter keyboard so uh, but yeah uh that was my biggest surprise uh in the middle of e3 just like oh my god resi 2 remake is coming and it looks incredible like fuck Capcom yeah seem to have gotten their shit together recently like they super are super it. gotten their shit together yeah like the 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 new devil may cry is looking pretty mm. swish i think mm. um I, I mean the street fighter advertising stuff not not because that looks terrible. Yeah, yeah, true. Um, but like, yeah, Capcom who's... are really pulling the finger out, aren't they? 
you know, he's, he's doing lots of the marketing for... Uh, um, uh, they did Resident Evil 7 and they're doing Resident Evil 2. No? It's, um, it's Special Gun, the, the studio that... Um, or the, the company that Steve Burns and, uh, and Jim from Video Gamer... Uh, oh, interesting. Hmm. Oh, cool. Um, but yeah, that's all I have to say about it. Resi 2, it's real. I can't believe Marvelous. it. Wow, I'm surprised. And it was it was a, a Resident Evil revelation. Very good. Thanks. So, Very so good. that that was that was the year of the year for you. That was the year mm. of the year. What All was right. your what was your biggest um, closet jump surprise <laughs> of the year? It's, <gasps> it's 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 ironic because it is also uh, horror based, <gasps> um, and it's something that I've not spoken about in a year. And my biggest surprise was it. Brackets 2017. Oh! Okay. I, I had no expectations of this film, other than knowing that it was remaking a Stephen King novel and miniseries. People thought it was going to be utter pump when it was delayed and reshoots ensued, but folks seemed utterly delighted with the end result. What I didn't expect was a really, really sinister Goonies. I didn't. I didn't realise the script was <laughs> That's really it's essentially good. It's essentially what it is. Okay. I didn't realise the script was co-written by the brilliant Kari Fukunaga, who was responsible for the first season of True Detective, amongst mm-hmm. other things. I love that so much of the film is set in broad daylight that even when the kids do venture into darkness, be it a sewer tunnel or into an abandoned house, escape may be right there, beaming in through, you know, uh, a, a tunnel or a boarded up window. But the, the claustrophobia of being trapped and of pressing on seems all the more resonant. The film does not fuck about from the off and gets right into things with almost no build-up. Uh, fear resides not just in Pennywise the Clown, but in the adults in the town. But it also mm-hmm. celebrates the absolute joy of childhood and summer holidays and out on your bike and making friends and enemies and thrilling adventures. I was charmed by it. The kids are all amazing. And I absolutely cannot wait for the second part, which is set 27 years later. The new cast are all amazing. Uh, and I'm glad there are flashbacks to the kids I, I, I grew to adore. There's loads of practical effects too, with the, the tipped in CG coming across as, as really, really natural. Uh, also, the direction by uh, Mama's Andy Muschietti mm-hmm. and cinematographer by Park Chan Wook cinematographer uh, Chung Chung Hoon are absolutely god tier. I loved it. I bought it immediately afterwards. Um, and yeah. I think it's a, a little bit special. And I don't think people realize how special it is. And that, like I say, that balance between. Best kids, summer adventure, wonderful, out on our bikes, beautiful sunlight, uh, and just absolute darkness. The contrast of the two is just amazing. I loved it. I really, really loved it. That's cool. I've I've Mm. never been a big um, Stephen King person. I mean, I read Dark Tower a couple of years ago and really enjoyed that, Mm. but I've not ventured much further in, and that's one of the ones I've always wanted to give a go. Um, It's a good film. I really liked it. Plus, um, the, the the lad from Stranger Things that's in it is mm. absolutely nothing like he is in Stranger Things, which is great. And um, the, I have still not watched Stranger Things. Like I say, the um, <laughs> the the modern day cast because the the sequels. I think it might have just finished filming. Mm. Um, the modern day cast is incredible as well. So um, yeah, can't wait for that one. But it 2017 was my biggest surprise. That's brilliant. Good good choice. Mm. Back to the box. Back to the box. In your box. Um, when? I was already in the box, but when mm-hmm. you said when, that's when I gripped the bit of torn up paper. It's finally worked. Six goes in. That's not me playing bongos. That's me pulling the paper. I still have an eye on. Question Ooh. mark? Question mark. The game that you wanted to play but didn't. It could be a, it could be a few games. You might or not know thing. a lot yeah. about them. Uh, but it's just like I I didn't get chance to play that, and it might have been because you've got 
enough stuff to play or it might have been you waiting for a price drop but um what do you fancy playing that you haven't that I'll you may you do and mm. why okay um i'd like to sound the corruption horn um, bear bear corruption you horn alert. you know what i'm talking about don't you assassin's creed mm. no i ain't got it um what no, I Because you see, I spoke spoke to Ellie, and she said her friend Lucy brought it back from Canada and was mm. going to post it on to you, and she was going to nah. ask. I here. bought my copy. I know. You I did. bloody I ponied up seventy quid for the season pass as well. Yeah, yeah? who's the best friend? You. Mm. In the, yeah, there we go. <laughs> yeah, I like how your subconscious just went. Yeah, it's you. Oh god, I'm that. not arguing. That's fine. I said that. <laughs> um. Yeah, Assassin's Creed. Um, when it was shown off properly at E3 this year, um, like you know, I was like, "Oh shit, Greek!" I think it was my number one uh, most uh, enjoyed game off the show. I think it was when we did our little top. <laughs> yeah, I'm definitely getting that," said Patrick Stardust. <laughs> Would you believe that Patrick Stardust said a thing about an Ubisoft game and then turned his mind on oh, it an hour later? Would you I believe? Where you go? I hope it's next out of the box. <laughs> 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 um, yeah, uh, I. It looks incredible. Like it looks like exactly not my shit. Um, obviously, the timing timing was not great for it though. Mm. Um, as it was coming out, I don't think I hadn't finished Immortal Unchained yet. I was still enjoying mm. that. Uh, I had a fair bit of stuff on the backlog. I was trying to work through and clear out. And Red Dead Redemption Two being just around the corner, mm. which I knew when that came would have to oversee everything, and it did because I've been waiting for that game for goddamn years. Like th- this was like gaming Christmas. There's too many presents. I don't have time to play all my presents. Um, so with the time beat like it was, I kind of didn't want to get, you know, 20 hours into it and then have to sack it off for a while because Red Dead mm. came out. You know what I mean? And mm. not to say that may- may- maybe it would have gone a different way. Maybe I would have ignored Red Dead for Assassin's Creed. But knowing the kind of person I am, Red Dead did... Well, it, it, it did in the end. It did consume me this year. Uh, Red, the, the later Red, half of the year. Red anyway. did. <laughs> Red did. Um, so yeah, I, I've been kind of having my eye on it, and I, I know there's a copy on its way, winging from Canada, which isn't here yet. But there's no problem. There's no, there's no rush. You know, I'm not in a massive rush at all. Um, not we're not we're not putting anyone on blast. That's that should be very very obvious here. We're not blasting. Uh, I can't complain about my free copy that I didn't get. That's that's not. You what should we're doing. you should chase that up because uh, Ellie sent it back to England with her friend. Mm. Yeah. Uh, so do it. Oh well, it's D and D night soon, so I'll ask her. Uh, now who's the best friend? D and D night. Uh. Um, but really, it's the still me to... for it's still me for spending seventy pounds. Oh, oh, yeah, it is. Um, but for me, it's really the reason I've still got my eye on it is the fun that you are having, that you've Honestly. been talking about, and the little mm. stories that you've put out. You put one the other day about mercenaries coming to get you, and then two more turned up, and then they also died. Um, S- and the, the things you I... find that make your regular arrows now into fire, like that, sounds like a thing I want. I, I will say that. The game, uh, I, I had fun from the off with it, but the game is getting better. Um, and I don't mean better. that as a slight from the start of the game. I mean that the momentum at this point that I'm at mm. is still huge. And like, you know, the, the story is amping up. And uh, certainly I've got yeah, I've got more time with it sort of after, after Christmas. But it's been one of those that I've been uh, dipping into before shifts mm. at work. And, uh, you know, even if that's... Uh, doing a few side quests or just running around and exploring it's been it's been nice to play the game however i want and i know mm. you are in, enchanted by the fact that i appear to be playing the game as an absolute dick which has surprised yeah. even me very surprising usually you're such a nice man like and i i see for, for me the flip was i was expecting to play red dead like a dick and i'm playing like the nicest man in the world hmm. like what's happened to us I don't know. I, th- I, I think there's been some sort of strange transference. Uh, Cassandra is amazing as well. Her voice actress mm. is stunning, and I I know you were you were leaning more towards uh, Alexios because of the fact that everybody seems to be so moored with Cass. But especially after Red Dead and you playing as a bloke, I'd certainly recommend you playing as as Cass because the voice actress is fucking fantastic. Mm. Um, and it's super well written as well. Plus, cool. uh, as I as I said, it's got the the line in there. Where it's like, ah, I'm on fucking fire, which may well be <laughs> the greatest line in the history of games. I like it. Mm. Um, so we can now uh, the corruption alert can now be taken down. Um, uh, thank you for bearing with our corruption 
paid shill alert. Thank you for that, everybody. Um, so that's my still have an eye on because I mean I actually picked up a lot of the stuff, mm -hmm. the smaller stuff, I had my eye on um, after Christmas with some money I got mm -hmm. for Christmas. So yeah, and we'll probably talk about some of those games soon. Soon. Not like game of the year soon, but maybe mm -hmm. maybe after game of the year in January or February soon we'll talk about them. Um, what about you? What are you? What what what's your eye? Still resting upon longingly. There's sort of three um, that I'm I'm looking at. I'd still like to play Octopath Traveler. I am really mm. taken by the look of it, and the people that I know that have played it have really enjoyed it. Um, after looking forward to it forever, I didn't really have time to play Dragon Quest Eleven, and have now picked it up for like 19.99, which is great. Cool. Um, so I'm excited to dive into that, and I haven't really. Sort of delved into a, a big cartoony RPG for a while. But the main one, and this is just um, sort of exemplified by the fact that I, I listened back to uh, our 2017 Game of the Year last okay. night. And it's just underlined the fact that I Yakuza 0 is waiting for me. I have Ooh. to get into Yakuza. Um and I, I think that's that's one of the one of the places I'm going to find myself. And I get the feeling that I'll probably just go straight on to Kwame and Kwame Two straight after, and then be like, mm. "Where is Yakuza Three? I can't play Six yet." Um. So, uh, yeah, Yakuza Zero is probably the. It's funny that being on. a position where you've got the other games and can't play it because you're waiting on two, isn't it? Hey, I had another look for you oh, last night to try and find the second one. Oh, that shade. Dare you. Oh, the shade. Do you know what? It's proven that pro their game is proven to be elusive. I'm trying to find a copy on eBay, and it's like 40, 50 quid. I'm like, oh, yeah, don't do that. You, you might at that point, you might as well just start on Yaku Zero and just take take sort of regular steps at this point. But it hurts me. I understand, but at, at least you, you're going back to the 1980s. That's that's pretty cool for us. That is that is true. That decade I was born in. Yay. Mm. <laughs> Are we boxing? Are we boxing? Okay, cool. Well, did you so it's a quickie that one? It's a quickie that one. Whoa, in and out. Standout gaming moment. Ooh. The the standout gaming moment. Best moment. Mm. Best moment of the year. Um. Okay. Yeah. Right. Mine's really easy. Uh. Best moment of the year was becoming one bro. Okay. I fucking did it, man. Mm, I actually did. fucking did Wombro it. Wombro Prime. Wombro Prime at that. Prime as well at that. Every boss down. No stone left uncovered. Everything finished. No, All men mm. must die. Including me. Several times. Um, I wasn't sure if I could do it at some points. Mm. Um, those DLC bosses were evil. Uh, beating our Taurus at level one is something I don't think... I, I, it's one of my proudest things. Mm. Doing that so because be. that is one of the fairest fights, you know, the one of the best one on one fights, and doing it with just a stick, just a stick with some nails in. Um, I was losing my mind by the end of it. I was actually, I mean, I a lot of the, the times, uh, I remember the montage, yeah. Um, those, those videos, those three particularly for the, the boss fights, uh, probably some of the most fun videos I've had to put together. Um, because I do like to dabble here and there and you know, put a montage together when I'm having fun. Um, those three were my favourite thing I've put together in years. Um, just just thinking, right, what can I put with this? What syncs up well? Oh, that's a good idea. Oh, now I've got another idea. Laura, help me. Is this good? No. Cool, I'm doing it. Um, the entire last of the run, I think from the point where I started the DLC onwards, was just like like chef fingers. Like, just mwah. Like, I'd, I'd learned the skills. I'd got everything I needed. From that point on, it was just do it. Like, there's no meta gaming. There's no, I need to go there and pick up that and go back to there and put that in there so I can do that to do that. All that stuff was out of the way. This is just, there's the game. Run at it and do a good job now. Mm. Um, and being able to focus like that and not have to worry too much about picking up stuff because it basically, there's one item you need, which is the, the pendant that, that stops the dark magic getting in, in the whole DLC. There's like one item you actually need for the rest of the game. And the rest of it is just, like, stuff you can't equip because you don't have any stats. So, like, being able to just blast through and just do what I felt like was quite freeing, actually. It was, um, 
really helps boil down to just playing the game. Um, I am very happy with myself that I took the time to save Solaire, even though I didn't think there was much point at the time, because without his help, I don't know if I'd have done it in the time that I did. I was having problems with Gwen. I couldn't parry. I'd lost my skill. It had all fallen off. Uh, and to have him come back at the end and save me and save the run for me with my friend, holy shit. I'm still, mm. I'm grinning now. I'm actually grinning now, like a dum dum. Mm. It was how fun that was. Um, I will say, it has kind of slightly ruined Souls 1 a little bit now, because every time I go back, all I kind of want to do is low level stupid runs now. Mm. And, like, they require a bit of work, and you can't just bang through one of those. You need to take your time and, you know, prepare for them and stuff. And I don't know, I've, I've, Remaster came out, and I've not got further than Anil Londo on, I think, three separate runs that I've tried, which mm. is. Strange, you know, but I mean, remaster was only ever going to be a thing I bought just because. Hey, look, it's remaster! Yay! Um, I don't think I was ever going to actually seriously get back into it and play it to the extent that I did at first. Anyway, um, that would be a fun kind one of... to do as a as a two bros do one bro, and that could be. both to have like a one bro run at stuff because it's yeah. different, and I'd, I'd be up for doing that. We could do that, um, mm. but yeah, like I, I think that I want something different to do with it, and that that could be it. You know, mm. I, I kind of feel like I've. I've done everything I needed to do with it by myself, mm. if you know what I mean. Like, and yeah. like, oh, cool! I've 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 climbed this mountain, you know. I've I've done this. I've done it, the hardest version of it that I can imagine. Um, I don't want to do it again. Well, I, I would, you know. I did start another one, bro, and got to Ornstein mm. and Snow in about two nights, which was I was very impressed with myself. Um, and I think I beat Ornstein and Snow on my first attempt on my second one, mm. bro, run. Uh, which I was very happy with. Turns out Great Combustion is a bitch. Um, but yeah, uh, the the crowning moment was that final shot. Gwyn goes down. I, I'm a one-bro now. One-bro prime. Well, well played, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Um, what about you, sir? What's your standout, standout outside in the rain, standout gaming moment? I'm going to mention the game and a summary of the moment after just telling you about it. And I want you to, I want you to just enjoy this little this little packet of words i have a feeling i know where this is going but please please do go on uh maybe don't but we'll see Mm -hmm. okay game requests the experience is better with headphones i put headphones on dual shock four pulses vocals i tear up song evolves i clean more lines more vocals. I clear more lines. Even more vocals. Breathless. Evocative. My movements are beautiful piano sounds. I am crying at Tetris. <gasps> so, so Tetris Effect, that, that Pulse song, Evolution. I mentioned, I mentioned before, and obviously with links to, uh, to you know, past lives and stuff. Music is super important to me. I am quite an emotional person. And having... Starting the game and just feeling that connection with the way that the, the DualShock 4 was like troubling and just the um, just the, the feel of it, but then hearing the vocals... I, I, I thought I, I knew what Tetris Effect was about, but I didn't. And um, Nobody does. Just, Nobody does until you do it. Just... The point where the vocals came in just destroyed me, and uh, when that then evolved a little bit further, it, more so still, then when things became much more whispery towards the end, and then the realization that the way that I was moving the blocks around was just beautiful, random little piano keys, it, just so resonant. Um, yeah, that's that absolutely threw me off guard, and um, I can only imagine how how good it is in VR. And I'm sure we'll get into this in, in the next episode. But <laughs> that just it was uh, it it punched me with rainbows. Oh. Do, do you know what? I if not for one bro, this would have been mine as well. Mm. Legit, legit. Uh, I did that, hear de- from, that demo uh, they put out. Holy shit! I did hear from uh, from Mark at A4 Play on the latest episode. Said that 
um, they are working on the album at the minute. So <gasps> that will be out next year. Well, that's a purchase. Mm. That I had it. I uh, like in my in my last band. Like the the guitarist never ever played Luminez, but mm. um, was absolutely obsessed with the album from Luminez, and I can hundred okay. percent see why. Uh, <clears throat> but um, but yeah, that 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 whole thing was really special, and I hadn't. I'd, I've been kind of. I nearly put something about it on Twitter, and I was like, no, I want us to to talk about this so I've been chewing on this for about like six weeks <laughs> um, but you know thank you very much for um, for this as a birthday gift because you're uh, welcome that that was a super special moment for me and I got, I got very um, all of the feels all of them that's so cool like ah, oh, we, we will talk about it more mm. soon definitely yep. um, I don't want to I don't want to burn that chat now no. Uh, so you're gonna have to wait a little bit longer, but yeah, I I can only wholeheartedly say that was a very close number two moment for me as well. Mm. Did that when you realise what's happening? Like, <gasps> yeah, we, so we, we're, gonna, we're gonna have to, but yeah, talk about this in the future because otherwise we'll there's there's time. Yeah, mm. we'll see, won't we? We'll see, maybe soon. Go on, son, put your head in the bag. Very little left the cardboard bag with edges. Card bag. Now, <laughs> in your reality, I'm your best friend. <laughs> the moment has arrived. Okay. The moment has arrived. Is it time? I'm going to preempt this by we've both got pretty much an idea of what we're going to talk about here, and it is the mm-hmm. um uh the, the title of the sequence isn't bigger sc- regret. But the biggest regret is that we uh, we had a podcast that didn't come to pass in the summer. Uh, again, it was scheduling and hours or whatever, but we were going to mm. um, do a bit of a swap. So I, when the the cop was coming in for No Man's Sky, I was going to uh, I got that, and we were we were going to play it together. And within the the rules of the swap season that we were doing, that uh, you were going to pick up the division. Yeah. And um, hang on, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> it's the division I, bell. Well done. Thank you. Uh, so th- so this I've been waiting is, two hours to use that. <laughs> this is this is best co op. Um but people who listen to the show will realise that um th- there's a millstone around your your ginger and pasty white neck. And that is the fact that you love this game at least two or three E3s and never went near it. And me, I couldn't be arsed with it from those E3s and turned my nose up at it, but bought it on two separate systems and played it to pieces. And I think it's made two of these end of year shows as well. Yep. Um, so, uh, so, yeah. Whoops. Let's, let's get into it. Yeah, um, so this kind of division actually turns up a lot for me on this list now, because we'll talk about it again in a minute. Hmm. Um, so, yeah, I didn't expect to have fun, because I didn't. I thought the beta was okay, but I didn't click with it. Like I thought, that's hmm. fine. I, and I, I played it by myself, and it was a very solitary, you know, quiet, take-my-time experience. I was having fun. I tried it four player, I think. I think we jumped in with Pete and the, the two Gavs for one night. Hmm. And it was it was okay, but it wasn't quite clicking. We were kind of like, we were running around, but none of us were kind of getting it. Do you know what hmm. I mean? Like, eh, it's, it's all right, I guess, but I didn't get it. And that's kind of when I wrote it off. And, you know, as is our way, or as is my way, oh, an Ubisoft game looks really interesting. I'll buy that in eight years. <laughs> um, and it happened again. Uh, so as part of the rules for the Divi, for the the the, the, the Swapsy episode, we did plan that we never got to. Um, yeah, we, we, we popped in Division, and I think it became alive because it was two-player. I think I would not enjoy this game as much by myself or in a team of three or four. I think it's much more fun as a buddy cop game. And I see, we, we did come together with as, as play cops in this, um, mm. and... There was a there was a definite evolution in the way that we play. I mean, I to to sort of pick up on what you've just said. I enjoyed the solitary nature 
of of playing on uh, on Xbox One. Like it's a, it's a very different game. It's very quiet. Mm. It's very uh, atmospheric. And you know, if you allow yourself to lose lose yourself in it, it's it is really good. Uh, I played with my friend Nora on PS4 in at a certain point, and we had a good time, like buddying up. Certainly, with regards to you and I. At first, there was a direct contrast in the experiences. I was all about kind of letting the world just drown me and almost like trying to 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 pass on the nuance that I'd I'd really fallen into on on the one <laughs> stuff. And you were all I shot a dog. Look at me looking at the <laughs> sign. Look at me shooting at this sign. But somehow that all came together with kind of a little bit from column a a little bit from column b coming from Mm. both of us it was kind of we synergized after a bit didn't we we did you you started i think i i lightened up a little bit and you started noticing like stuff in the world i I think we got really taken in by the missions as well because Mm. those missions are just like it's not just arrive at a place and do a thing it's like go deeper into it go deeper into it now or, go up there. Now go around there. Now there's there's more stuff. Like oh, now there's a big boy. Like oh, please don't. And you know there's there was stuff like uh, seeing the the bodies that were piled up at a certain point when you were going mm. underground and you just slung into a hole. And they, the world, the city is a huge character in the world anyway. Um, but the way that the environmental storytelling is super fantastic. But man, those mm. those big missions are oh, belters. Mm. I, I would actually say I, I think I got more like joy out of the the small stuff, the atmosphere stuff, than the story mm. stuff. I think for me so far, mm. like when you find, uh, for example, shops or posters or adverts for shops that you then beef find plus the fun shop equals off. Kobe's. Beef plus fun equals Kobe's. Yeah. Um, why is no beef meat company? Why is no burger? That's the word burger. Burger company had that as their uh, tagline. Beef Why didn't fun? insert coin clothing when they did their very brief division line? Why didn't they see that and just go, "That's the that's that's the hook." You can do a million T-shirts about Life is Strange with a bloody hot dog on the front or whatever it is. Mm-hmm. But where is beef plus fun equals Kobe's? Put that on the back of a hoodie. I would argue beef plus fun would equal money for them that we would give them to buy. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, so yeah, we, right. We, we found lots uh, of stuff. We like settled that. into our usual again, didn't we? Do you know what? And I yeah. think this was this was where we discovered, and I think we finally came to terms with Ubi Bants because this... we did Ubi Bants. Unironically, did Ubi Bants, and we realised what we were doing. Like we just did an Ubi Bant. Now I I said to you in uh, on the the E three show where mm. you kind of ripped into uh, the Division Two like Ubi Bant stuff, and I was like. It is. It is like that, and you were like, mm. and then at a certain point, I called you out on it. You were like, yeah, yeah, we're doing newbie pants because yeah. that's what you do. We do talk about the game as we play it, and it it was almost identical, wasn't it? Like it's like, oh no, we it, it's right, but it's fun. Like we you are see, talking about the games we go and kind of chatting little incidental stuff. We go, oh, I picked up a new hat. Oh, CJ. Yeah. Oh, look, I've picked up all the fashions. Um, I mean, our, our tactics meshed together wonderfully. Me being a sniper boy with a portable turret, you with a close range fella with the the homing bomb, um, and my super cover. Oh, I love my super cover. But there is generally look, those um, kind of right. I'm going up here. Uh, are you off to the right? Okay, uh, let's go in now. I'm throwing out the turret. Right, we've got runners. Also, one of the greatest gaming moments of this year is definitely shooting into uh, the backpack of those lads with the flamethrowers uh-huh. and watching them <laughs> like come out before they go <laughs> and I think we were and then a second, and then the a second night, later hey! <laughs> even the other night when we were playing it it was just like got one got one <laughs> it was just like just sort of yeah. these little walking candles like wandering around and there was it was almost sort of a, a little bit of a um Competi- un- unspoken competition between us for, mm. uh, for for setting them off, but yeah. Do you know what? I think even outside that as well, like outside, because as, as as fun as a popping king, I had so much fun, like me and you, running around, picking up random bits of loot, and going to the social spaces where other people were. Because okay, so there's best, a few things. Best that line happened. of the year. Best line of the year came from you in this. 
And yep. uh, I didn't expect it. That line was... Right, so we're in the social set. We're in the social area, right? There's people running around, right? Here's me and CJ trying to look cool, right? People come in. You look like the man on the box. There are a lot of people that dress like they are from any Tom Clancy game. They are super militaristic. And yet, what are you dressed as? Currently, I'm dressed as a grumpy old detective man in bright orange trousers and a cool leather jacket and cool shades. What are you, you have, dressed as? You have silver hair. Silver hair. I'm, I'm like Gerald of Rivia. I am a bearded man with a great bobble hat and a beautiful varsity dra- jacket. And together we are plague cops and we are Mr. Beef and Mr. Fun. Sponsored <laughs> by Kobe's. <laughs> I will say as well, every single time we picked up any item of clothing, I would pick up, oh, I've got a brown jacket. Oh, I've got a t-shirt I'm not going to wear. What did you pick up, CJ? Oh, I picked up a purple nasty jacket. <laughs> oh, I picked up some orange clothes. Oh, I picked up this. Yeah. I picked up that. Every single thing you picked up was incredible. And everything I it had was... was nothing. I was being betrayed by the game. I was being betrayed by you. You are Coffee Judas. <laughs> there were bits where you were just like, oh, it's just a, it's just a grey grey beanie hat. What do you get, CJ? I got a mahogany bobble hat with yellow piping and a yellow bobble on the end. And you were just... There was also points. There was also points where we were going into infected buildings to try and uh, like take down these or fire up these uh, these things that would virus neutralize things, yeah. the yeah the virus scanners. And it became a race for who can get into wardrobes, wardrobes. quick enough to find some nice stuff. But and we yeah, found we... some lovely stuff eventually. I mean, I've kind of settled with my look now. I'm kind of happy with mm, it. But my I god, can, likewise. That early game um, stuff, my god, it was like it was like Santa had come, but only to one house that year. We we continue to have a lot of fun with this, and I'm you know I'm I'm super excited about the sequel because the sequel looks like it's genuinely building on um, the stuff that we've experienced here, and is going to mm. involve you know more of the more of the public in the battles rather than just being the victims, and mm. uh, it just looks incredibly vibrant. But uh, I I do want you to pick it up. Because otherwise, I'm just going to have a will, experience someone. Knowing knowing how I am, uh, this will be in our 2021 game of the year show. Uh, <laughs> forward to that. Wait, have, have I got? Have I got? To, oh, this will be in my 2019 and 2020. Yep, and then I'll pick yeah. it up in 2021, and then the circle will be complete. Where By that be, point, we'll, best, be best <laughs> we'll be talking about Division Three again. We'll be talking about Division Three. Yeah. I will. I will put like a, a wee bit of a caveat and and just. Give a heads up for Sea of Thieves because it, it didn't uh, it didn't get much in the way of press um, and people were like oh my god I can't can't believe how limited it is even mm. though things like Fortnite and PUBG exist or and I thought Sea of Thieves was fantastic the the co op stuff that I've had with uh, with friends has been genuinely some stuff that I've not experienced anywhere else and it's been mm. tense it's been colourful I genuinely wish that that you and I had had a chance to. Uh, to play that because I mm. just think we'd have been pirate cop numpties um, together. I think we'd have had Captain a good Beef life, and um, Captain it... Beef and Seaman Fun. <laughs> Seaman Fun. <laughs> <laughs> this is going back to your love of boys. <laughs> um, but, if uh... we're giving a quick nod, then uh, I had another mm. thing tipped for co-op as well. I'll just give a quick nod to. Uh, again, we'll talk about this more later. Uh, but I don't think I ever had a bad time playing Monster Hunter World with people. Every single mm. time, every person I played with was different kind of fun, but mm. always a fucking. I've written disaster blast. Um, yeah, I think we'll, we'll almost get to every that time. Next time. We will, uh, but a little, just a little quickie, mm. little heads up to Monster Hunter World. Every single person mm. I played with, we had fun. Well done, everybody. So, given that you didn't like the um, the, the the beta of the division, what mm. what super opened up? For, with regards to the fun that you were having in two play, I think it was. I don't know. I think it's because we were chatting. It was a good like, like we had with Destiny. It was a declutter, like a de de stress game. We could turn it on. Mm. We could have a chat. We could shoot some boys. What do you fancy doing now? Let's go over there. All right, let's go over there. And like you'd see bits of the world. You could kind of play it. But it was. I don't want to say background music because that does sell it short. But do you know what I mean? It's like a place that we can go. And explore the world and talk about it, and then still talk about the day around it as well. But there's stuff, and there's what did we find the other day? We found an audio log just titled "Coffee." I was like, "Dude, 
Yeah, Dude, that, come that over here. Spot on. I found um, one for you. But I think that in a differential to Destiny, which was kind of definitely a how how's your day and like super catch up whilst shooting stuff, this was being so entertained by the world that you mm. were constantly being pulled in directions for like posters or are the boys around here? Right, I'm just gonna I'll be, I'll be firing off a pulse in a minute. Like, stay where you are and. It was genuinely that kind of super bounce back and forth, which, you know, people rip the piss out of on those on those videos. And I do want you mm. to watch that, vi- that that Division 2 E3 video again, because it's okay. 100% the shit that we've been doing. <laughs> <laughs> I will. Mm. Uh, but yeah, the, the game looks good. I'm, I'm, I'm really excited for the, for the second one. But yeah, it's, it's fun to share this after all this time. And mm. also, I, I do think it's super cool that uh, they're giving out rewards that will be available in The Division 2 for continuing to play The Division. That's, that's, that's really yeah, neat. Yeah, a through line. I like it. Mm. Mm. Foster a community. Are we down to our last category then? It might. It might well be. Okay, well, now. Okay. You you got it again. Yeah. Super talented man. Super talented man. It is. Wish you played more of. The game you wish you played more of. Ah. Oh. You ready for this? Hmm. I'm ringing the division bell. Oh my god. Yep. Uh, Do it. I, I, I wanted to play more of this. Um. Mm. I played it exclusively with you. I played a little bit by myself, but again, because I wasn't digging it as much, I basically played it exclusively with you. Um, and we got to what level? Oh, God, what level were we last night? 13, 14, 14 something like yeah. that? Yeah, that was it. Um, but, like, again, last night, the kind of fun we had with it, or the night before, was like, this is really fun. Like, we should mm. do this more. Like, this is this is a laugh. And where Destiny kind of came in and kind of was that for a little while, and then it kind of drifted away again. Um, like, I kind of... I kind of feel like I'm done with Destiny for a while. Even with mm. all the new stuff that's come out, I'm kind of... Uh, I, I don't need it right now. Um, mm. Whereas this kind of felt different and unique and fun. And we've just talked at length about why it's good. Uh, so I don't mm. need to do that again. Um, but again, we picked it up late in the year. We didn't record that podcast about it, which I'm still bummed out about. Because I think we had way more to say about it than we already have. We didn't. Um, there was also the aspect that it was you that was that was saying about No Man's Sky. Like, I didn't think this is kind of really better as a alone game and not a, a not a mm. co-op experience and then you massively fell into the division has, I, agree, I, yeah. I agree with you mm. yeah no I, I i think no man's sky was fun on your own but two player kind of i don't know lost something maybe it was fun maybe but not maybe because it's it you are concentrating so much on what you need and what you, what you need to find and what you need to and build and what you're trying to discover not to put you on blast but i was playing games with the slowest gamer in the world <gasps> this is this is me you, are, you do take your time. It's like, we can I go, I'm going to go pick up this iron. No, it's literally, there's stuff over here. Let me, give me a minute. Like, where Paddy, have you gone? I'm in a cave. <laughs> Paddy, do you remember how long I take eating? Yes, that's true. I, I am a very, very slow eater, certainly. But um, yeah, but yeah it's, I, we're having a, a really good time with it. And, it, you know, for for those folks that maybe think that it's not for them, it's like four ninety nine. It's a fiver. It it's, costs nothing now. Mm. Like, get it. it it's, and like... I I think for my money the the three ways I've played it, two player is definitely my favourite way of playing it. Mm. Maybe it's because it's me and you playing. Like, will it be as fun with another rando? Mm. I don't know. But like in two player, like you know, chatting away, de- de- decluttering the day, but also you know, enjoying the game at the same time. Mm. It was great, and I am more of that. And I know that you know our schedules don't link up as much as they do, which is probably why we didn't play more of it. You know, I because you're kind of on strange hours, and then sometimes you get home and I'm, I'm exhausted and broken from work so I can't play either so you know there's always that aspect of you want to you want to do something you want to put your everything into it don't you you don't want to play broken or play with half assed I um, think the, there's the aspect as well that when we do play those levels are so memorable like whether mm. you're, you're going into a, a, a train station you're seeing you, or the individual trains that are kind of uh, that are sort of parked, and you know that there are uh, there are bags with explosives that are timed around there, and you've got little pockets of the homeless and stuff that are there. Or oh god, what was that? There was that amazing I like the stadium. The stadium's good with all the kind of the story of the, the disaster center set up in the middle of it, and then it kind of gets worse oh yeah as you yeah, go yeah. Up. yeah love the stadium. Uh, there was the don't forget there was that the one way we were going into uh, the exterminators place, and there was the massive mm. crane and the big sort of factory and. 
uh, that was that was one of those where it's like, oh, I get to the end of here. Oh, there's more. Oh, there's more. Shit's happening. And there was the crane stuff towards the end of that as well. Was also, the, the, the boss fight that we really struggled with because it was a very big boy. It was over about three different levels, and he was like, "He's coming over to you. He's coming over to you." Oh shit! Oh shit! Oh shit! Run, 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 run. Just, <laughs> and they were they were arrived. Other other boys were arriving in like elevators and stuff as well. And um, also, isn't it fun to go through a level and to be like at the type of a skyscraper? And it's like, oh, I wonder how we get down. A rope. Yeah. It's just Whee! like <laughs> down to the ground. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's um, and I'm, I'm I'm really glad it's. Uh, it, it hit you like that because yeah. I super enjoyed it and it was nice the other night sort of going back to it and uh, and figuring out how it worked again yep but how do I gun that that didn't take long at all did it it was swapping the gun back out and working yeah. out where the powers were once we had that yeah. I think we were okay but yeah you're if you were if you were ill with anything this year is you just dis, you discovered ubi bands the virus yeah. of ubi bands uh, got it's... you. So next next year, if there's any expansion for it or something showing off at E3, you'd be like, "That's fair." Yeah, <laughs> be I'm like, right with this. Nobody this talks like that. We all oh, we, it's bad. Beer. So mm. yeah, that was my wish. I'd played more of it was hmm. the division. Well played. Thank you. Uh, you? My my final one. Uh, I wish I'd played more of Zelda Blade Chronicles Two. Is that the one where the swords are the girl? Yes. Okay, cool. Carry on. Uh, it was my first Switch game, even before I got on the Switch. After spying the phenomenal special edition with three hundred page giant size artwork art book, it's it's wow. a chunky old art book. Let me tell you, and it's beautiful. Uh, but uh, uh, there's a steel book in there. But it was a it was one of those that was in a sale. I think mm. I'd, I'd there were rumours about Dark Souls coming to Switch at that point, and I was like, yeah, I'm having that. Um, the first Xenoblade Chronicles on Wii I enjoyed but didn't find as much of myself in it as other folks, whereas Xenoblade Chronicles X, which isn't connected to the original Xenoblade Chronicles, moved me mahoosively. Mm. Uh, Xenoblade Chronicles 2 is a sequel to the first game, kind of, in sort of a Dark Souls 2 kind of way. Uh, the game okay. looks lovely, the worlds are wonderfully put together and the battle system a version of which it shares with all of the the games uh really is a a joy uh but for me the real star of the show is the dub uh it's partially uk based with the okay. lead character rex having a lancashire accent <laughs> oh god do i remember saying that mm. but and uh and the character of nia it being full full-on welsh <laughs> uh so like Rex, I can't believe you're doing that. It's like, bro, it's it, how many games are just like complete US dubs, and it's amazing hearing hearing those accents sort of going like. I mean, all all of the all of the games have have had uh, UK accents in there. Um, I think Xenoblade Chronicles X only had sort of one voice really. The original Xenoblade Chronicles was a whole UK cast, mm. uh, but in this one is sort of half and half. But um, but yeah, the, it's nice the to hear those are... accents coming out of someone that isn't a dwarf. Yeah, and you know, on a, on a side note, it was particularly uh, ace to see Nia's voice actress, Catherine uh, uh, Myhew, mm-hmm. being so taken aback by the love she's received for her performance. <laughs> it's a it's a first video game work, and she's more uh, she's more well known in the mainstream uh, for her work as Natalie and Gavin and Stacey. Um, okay, but she's sensational, as in like. Every single line and each delivery. She's amazing. Uh, so I need to get back to the game. Plus, it's already received an expansion uh, and a full-on standalone prequel. Oh. Like, retail release standalone prequel. Christ. Uh, in, the, in the time since it's released. So, uh, I have yeah, no idea. There's, there's a fair bit there if I fancy more of it. Oh. So, no. That's, no. that's our lot. The box is so, empty. Mm, so, the, this is the, the first box. And oh. the 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 second one we're going to work on because we've got a few uh, kind of quirky weird bits that we're going to be doing with it. But um, yeah, expect Thanks that for listening soon. Mm. Um, and maybe maybe mm-hmm. there might just be uh, a Matt Braid tune following our Cheerios. So yeah, we'll enjoy. see. Enjoy whatever happens mm. now. 
Yeah. Thanks, Whether everyone. Silence or wonderment. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> Hello, it's CJ. Um, I mentioned Matt Gray's Reformation 2 on Best Thing. Could be anything. And uh, said that I wanted to try and get a track if I could. And I got permission to use this one. So after much deliberation, I've used uh, the Reformation remake of Commando. This was originally by a legendary chiptune artist called Rob Hubbard, uh, converted from the Capcom arcade machine of the same name. Uh, when Hubbard did what Hubbard did, and he was a, an absolute legend back in the day, um, it, it it was it it. It was distinct from the other versions with just this pounding soundtrack that folded back in on itself. It created chaos, this sugary wonderment. It became addictive in of itself. Uh, it's, the original is a joy. Um, just to give you a bit of insight as well, from an interview on SidMusic.org, the legend behind this goes, there's an interesting story behind Commando. I went down to their office and started working late, late at night and worked on it through the night. I took one listen to the original arcade version and started working on the Commodore 64 version. I think they wanted some resemblance to the arcade version, but I just did what I wanted to do. By the time everyone arrived at 8am in the morning, I had loaded the main tune on every Commodore 64 in the building. I got my check and was on a train home by 10am, said Rob Hubbard. Now, this version by Matt Gray is just... God shaking, teasing intro, big drums. Listen to it evolve. Uh, it's very mysterious at the start, and then it just it just punches you. So uh, yeah, this the original was by Rob Hubbard. Uh, this remake from Reformation Two is by the brilliant Matt Gray. Uh, so this is Commando. <laughs> 